Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the sixth lesson in meteorology. We're going to be discussing stability. Uh, specifically, we'll be discussing the stability of the air and how it relates to weather phenomenon. Here's a nice little picture from space of a very large thunderstorm. This will be indicative of unstable air. We'll learn more about that in this lesson. In your theory of flight uh, lessons, we learned about stability or the tendency of an object when displaced to return to its original position. Similarly, in meteorology, we can discuss stability of a parcel of air, that when the parcel of air is uh, disturbed, it has a tendency either to return to its original position or continue along that trajectory if it's unstable air. So in relation to meteorology, stability is the atmospheric resistance to vertical motion. Unstable air, when displaced, will continue to rise, where stable air will return or at least uh, stop at its position. But remember uh, that rising air cools and sinking air warms. This is always the case because as air rises, it expands, and as gas expands, it will cool down and vice versa. So stability has to do uh, or is largely dependent on the lapse rate. We remember that the lapse rate is the change in temperature with altitude. We have dry adiabatic lapse rates, remember at three degrees per thousand feet, and we have moist adiabatic lapse rates, 1.5 degrees per thousand feet. So if the lapse rate of a parcel of air is greater than the dry adiabatic lapse rate, so more than three degrees per thousand feet, the air parcel is unstable. And this should be somewhat obvious when you think about it, uh, that let's say a parcel of air, let's say sea level, uh, it's 15 degrees, and then that parcel of air uh, at, uh, rises to let's say 2000 feet, and let's just say it, the lapse rate of that parcel of air is four degrees, uh, then, uh, four degrees per thousand feet. So now at 2,000 feet, we've reduced the temperature by uh, eight degrees. So now it's seven, whereas outside it would be uh, 11 uh, degrees. And so we'll have that air uh, expand and cool down more and then raise up more. Conversely, if the lapse rate of a parcel of air is less than the saturated or moist adiabatic lapse rate, the air parcel is stable. So if it doesn't change, that parcel of air doesn't change much with altitude, it's not going to continue to rise, continue to expand and continue to cool. And then in between those two, the, uh, the parcel of air will be conditionally unstable. The stability of the air can be modified by a number of factors. First off, we can have daytime heating. If the heating of the earth causes a higher lapse rate near the surface, there will be less stability can have advection. If the air moves over Earth that is warmer than itself, it will become unstable. A subsidence inversion is the air sinks, it will compress and heat, causing it to become more stable. And if there are convective cells, the air surrounding the convective cells may sink. Here's some characteristics of air with, uh, in relation to stability and instability. So the characteristics of stable air are poor low level visibility, stratus cloud continuous precipitation. Usually we have steady winds that change markedly with altitude and smooth flying conditions. So uh, often when there's fog, the, the air will be very stable. Unstable air on the other hand, gen generally has good visibility with cumulus type clouds and showery precipitation if you have precipitation. It also tends to be gusty and turbulent in unstable air. Surfaces uh, can heat and cool and will have differential effects on the heating and cooling that will affect the local weather phenomenon. So for example, water, uh, large bodies of water are slow to heat due to their uh, specific heat capacity. They're slow to heat, slow to cool, and therefore will modulate the temperature. The temperature will not rise as greatly, let's say during the day or the night, or even summer and winter. And this is why coastal regions, let's say Vancouver, don't get too hot during the summer, but they also don't get too cold in the winter. On the other hand, if you have like sand dunes, let's say Las Vegas, you'll have massive variations in temperatures that 
the uh, summer temperatures will get very hot, and then at night it can cool down rapidly. Uh, plowed fields are fast to heat and cooled, and you can expect large updrafts and downdrafts. Often uh, glider pilots, you'll see they'll be looking for plowed fields and, uh, and thermal uh, over there because there'll be a lifting process there from the heat, uh, the convective activity over these fields. Let's talk about some lifting processes. So when uh, clouds form, for example, we need a, uh, especially on stable air, we need some sort of a lifting process to get the whole thing started. First one we'll discuss is orographic lift. This is where a moist air rises up on a slope. And if you can see here on the right, you see those clouds right at the ridge it's from the uh, moist air over the ocean slowly uh, being blown up uh, that ridge and it rises up, it expands and cools, and then uh, the water vapor condenses into water droplets forming clouds. You can have convection, so hot air rises. Here are some plowed fields. We have warm air, it rises up. As it rises, it expands and then will cool uh, and, uh, and condense. Frontal lift occurs when a parcel, when there's a, a, a weather front, such as a cold front, the cold air forces itself under the warm moist air so in this case we have a continental polar air mass we'll learn a bit more about that later forcing it's, it's advancing on a maritime tropical so a warm moist air mass forcing that warm moist air up above it and as it forces it up it will expand and cool which point it will the uh, air will reach its dew point the air will become saturated and the water vapor condenses into water droplets forming clouds in the center of a low pressure area, we have convergence. So air goes from high to low. So from the surrounding areas towards the center of the low, once it reaches the center of the low, it cannot go anywhere other than up. So it is forced up. And as it uh, is forced up, it expands, cools, reaches its dew point and uh, clouds form. At the center of a low air it converges and rises. because And at the center of a high, the air diverges and subsides or goes down. Air is unstable if it cools faster than the dry adiabatic lapse rate of three degrees uh, per thousand feet. The air is stable if it cools slower than the saturated adiabatic lapse rate or 1.5 degrees per thousand feet. Stability of the air is modified by advection, daytime heating, subsidence, inversion, and convective cells. We have a number of lifting mechanisms, frontal, orographic, convection, and convergence. Stable air is characterized by stratus type clouds, driz uh, drizzle, mist, fog, poor visibility. Unstable air is characterized by cumulus type clouds, good visibility, rain showers, and thunderstorms. Which of the following is not a lifting mechanism? A, divergence. B, convergence, C, convection, D, frontal. So remember convergence or divergence, well, well, we'll knock that one off first. So that is not a lifting mechanism. Divergence causes subsidence, which the air is moving down and out. Convergence uh, at a low pressure area where the air comes from the surrounding areas to the center and then moves up. So that's a lifting mechanism. Convection, that's uh, basically your hot air rising and D, frontal, a, a cold, uh, air mass pressing under a warm air mass, forcing it up. So the correct answer, A, divergence is not a lifting mechanism. At the center of a low, so remember the air wants to go from high pressure to low pressure, so from the surrounding regions, it converges towards the low, and then when it has nowhere to go at the center of the low, it's forced to rise. So the correct answer, A. The lapse rate is four degrees per thousand feet. You can expect the following weather. So remember the dry adiabatic lapse rate is three degrees per thousand feet. So four degrees per thousand feet is greater than the dry adiabatic lapse rate, which means the air will be unstable. So we can look through this list, which of these uh, type of weather phenomena are associated with unstable air, snow, not really. B, stratus clouds, not at all. C, fogs, not at all. That would be stable. D, thunderstorms. So thunderstorms is the correct answer. You have unstable air. That's when you have a lapse rate greater than the dry adiabatic lapse rate. 
That concludes this lesson on stability. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you in our next lesson.